Welcome everybody to another episode of Comic Book History. This issue or week episode, we're going to take a look at all the Marvel comics released with a cover date of February 1963. Here they are. They only released 10 comics at this time. Can you imagine? Don't you wish it was like that these days? And of course, comics are only 12 cents each, so you could have bought the whole month's releases from Marvel for $1.20. And what's interesting about this list is if you look closely, Four of the titles are aimed at the young girl reader market. We've got Kathy modeling with Millie, Patsy and Hetty, and Patsy Walker. Interestingly, at this time, Patsy Walker was the star of two different titles. Millie the model had her own two series, and the Human Torch appeared in two different series, Fantastic Four and his own solo stories in Strange Tales. So that's the three big names in Marvel Comics in early 1963. Today we're going to analyze all the superhero titles. <coughs> these are some of the earliest Marvel hero books. Uh, these are some of the rarest ones, especially in high grade. And this is before the big boom happened where everyone became a Marvel collector. So these books are pretty scarce in high grade. And it's interesting to look at the CGC census just to see how many copies have actually surfaced. So let's start going through them. So there are five titles we're going to look at today, starting with Fantastic Four number 11 which of course features early appearances of the team itself. And let's go look at some details of this series from my series of books that I write and publish called Investing in Comic Books. And Fantastic Four number 11 was in fact the 33rd Marvel Silver Age hero comic. Okay, it features um, The Impossible Man, first appearance, Stan Lee and and uh, drawn by Jack Kirby. Okay, and the print run was approximately 200,000 copies of this. This is now turning into potentially being Marvel's best selling title as they're starting to grow in popularity with this title. Looking at the CGC census over the last decade, you'll see that we've almost tripled in copies been graded in the last 10 years, and even Heritage Auctions have tripled the amount of copies they've sold on this classic February 1963 issue of Fantastic Four. And here's the Overstreet Price Guide in uh, the last 16 years. You can see the growth in all grades. You can see that the book has basically doubled in low grade and it has tripled in high grade over the years. What we can also do is of course go to eBay or go to GP analysis and look for more current sales and of course looked at graded books and see if any of the really top grade books have been sold. The other thing I want you to notice is how scarce this, these books are in high grade. There are only four copies graded 9.6 or higher. And that hasn't gone up very much in the last decade, but uh, notice at one time there was actually zero copies. <coughs> so they're starting to get graded. And of course, as the books get more valuable, there's more incentive for people to send in these books to get graded because they're obviously going to be more profitable. And notice on the CGC census, there are only six copies of the UK price variant. And so if you're into those, very hard to find. That's very few copies. Um, looking at the overall chart, right, there's, there's the stats. And even just 9.0 and higher, right, there's only 31 copies. The average graded copy from CGC is only a 5. Okay, let's go back to the list. We're going to look at some of the other big books this month. Journey into Mystery 89 featured the seventh appearance ever of Thor, who of course is one of Marvel's most successful characters ever. It's the 34th comic published by Marvel in their Silver Age superhero run. And this is an origin issue. Jack Kirby cover and art and Steve Ditko did the backup feature art. Here's the classic cover. So this is a good key issue, early appearance and an origin issue. Notice on the CGC census, demand has been a little bit higher for this one. There, it's almost uh, four times the amount of books graded, but again, in 9.6 and higher, only four copies graded, period. And Heritage has been constantly selling copies. Again, over at Overstreet, <coughs> it was quite a cheap book 20 years ago. 
So it's now basically tripled in low uh, grade, but look at this, it's gone up about 900% in high grade. So again, the 9.6, 9.8s are gonna sell for record prices because there's so few of them. Two copies only graded of the UK price variant. And looking at the overall census, it's considered a classic cover as well. So that's going to help it in the long run if you're investing in this title. <coughs> Notice that comparing those two books, Fantastic Four number 11 has been graded many more copies. But they're fairly close in terms of how many high grade copies have been graded. The next book we're going to look at today is Strange Tales number 105 features a Human Torch cover, and this was the fifth issue of his solo run in this book. And some of the details on this one, Human Torch battles the wizard in a story guest starring the Invisible Girl. Jack Kirby drew the cover, and Don Heck and Steve Ditko each drew a backup feature. And over at the CGC Census, this book's a lot scarcer. There's just a lot less demand for this title. and But yet, the CGC census has tripled. There's only two 9.6 or higher graded copies. And heritage sales have tripled in the last decade. Nice cover of The Human Torch and The Wizard. Over at Overstreet, the book has not even doubled in low grade. This title, just for whatever reason, does not have a lot of demand. I've been saying for a decade now, when are people going to jump on this title? It's starting to become very affordable compared to all the other books we're talking about. In super high grade, it has gone up about four times. And on the census, again, there are no 9.8s, just the two 9.6s. Second appearance of The Wizard and Fantastic Four appear in that. So again, way less copies graded, less copies in the 9.6 and higher. All right. Next is Tales of Suspense, number 38. And this book has got something unique about it. It is the last sci-fi themed issue of this title before next month it would switch to superhero mode and become one of the most valuable comics of all time. But this is the precursor, so this issue is actually quite hard to find. Features Jack Kirby art, print run estimated at 188,000 copies of this book published. And only 91 copies graded total, with 15 copies graded 9.0 or higher. Heritage has never sold many of this either. This book really is quite scarce, and yet, again, still has a low uh, Overstreet price guide values. Why? Because it's not a superhero title. There are no 9.8s of this one, and there is only one of the UK price variants graded, and it's graded a 6. Okay, so comparing that on our chart, again, out of the five books we're featuring on today's episode, it's by far has the least amount of copies graded and therefore it also has the least amount of high grade copies out there. Finally, we're going to look at Tales to Astonish number 40. What's so special about this book? Well, this one is now becoming a superhero title as it features another appearance of Ant-Man. It's his seventh appearance ever. Jack Kirby art, also Steve Ditko and Don Heck contributed to this one. And on the CGC census, it's again tripled in the last decade, but still not a lot of copies overall. Only three copies graded 9.6. So again, these super high grade copies, good luck ever finding them. And the people with the money might luck out and be able to get a copy one of these days. So there's the cover. It's a nice clean cover. Classic logo. And in the last dec uh, two, two decades, again, it hasn't even doubled in low grade, but it's gone up roughly four times in high grade. And no uh, British UK copies graded at all by the CGC. And again, very few you'll see on the census in general. Okay, 
So what I wanted to mention is, yes, they released 10 titles this month. They're only featuring the five that are sort of in the superhero sci-fi genre. So let's just compare Rawhide Kid number 32. This probably has Jack Kirby art, as he was basically drawing everything at this time at Marvel. Only 11 copies graded on the CGC census in any condition, and there's, by luck, there's a 9.0, and then there's three 8.0s. So there's a few decent higher grade copies, but nothing much there. And again, the, the girl titles are going to be much rarer yet because they rarely get graded. And finding super high grade of Kathy and Patsy and Eddie, for example, are almost impossible. So it's just interesting, right, to do those comparisons. So there you go. So we're going to continue this series week by week. We're going to learn the history of Marvel as the, as the company uh, evolves and expands and brings in new characters. And the popularity of Marvel Comics grows month by month. By 1964, Marvel Comics is a giant with all of their main characters established. But right now, we haven't even got most of them. They haven't even appeared yet. So in the next few weeks, we're going to start to see them all show up. It's going to be very exciting, especially when we get to compare the CG census totals for the books that are now selling for thousands of dollars. So I hope you'll tune in. Please subscribe to this. I thank you for watching, and we will see you again next week. Thanks.